Bueno. Ya, yeah, ok. Ok. The wearable computing and their technological development such as smartwatches, some of the person, smart glasses who have sophisticated artificial intelligence algorithms operating them, including machine learning to recognize risk or alarming situations too. Um, about the browsers. Browsers where we can find by beyond inspired apps such as Google Maps, Wise, Waze or TomTom, Tom, commonly use algorithms to find the shortest route using traffic, weather, tourism, among other factors. And um, now we have the social media apps. Nowadays, we don't know what our lives would be without Instagram, Facebook, WhatsApp, and Twitter, which are the social medium in where the degree of social influence is highlighted by sharing of our life and our personal desires. In the background of this type of networks, we find sentimental, political, or religion preference, and a sentiment analysis engineering is applied here. The another one is the music apps. Spotify and this allow you to unlimited music streaming and according to the most required tracks, uh, they automatically generate playlists by identifying the customer preferences and give suggestions for new playlists. Something similar occurs with video plat platforms such as Netflix and YouTube. For this, the use of uh, association rule is, uh, um, is an algorithm that we use the, in these applications. Now, with the pandemic for, by COVID-19, these applications uh, become too popular. And dating app, Tinder, such as Tinder, Bumble, and many other apps automatically search for profiles with certain degrees of shared similarity or compatibility. The backbone is machine learning as well. The automatic generation of images uh, and animation is so popular among young people, includes a digital image processing engine, pattern recognition and simulation. We, uh, here we can, we can see Salvador Dalí or Mona Lisa in motion, in fact, smiling. In this application is really ingenious for me. And finally, the cryptocurrencies being the Bitcoin is the most famous, use highly sophisticated methods to encrypt information in order to deal with cyber attacks and safeguard the information they carry. Now, the question here is exactly how does machine learning work? Well, we, we will now review this aspect in more detail. As I mentioned before, all the data that is processed can come from different sources, being some, uh, some of them, Grayscale images, color images, remote sensing images, sensor signals, writing characters, standard databases, among others. So as to machine learning algorithms to be able to process these resources, a transformation process is required prior to their processing. In this slide, we can see the general process that machine learning follow. Uh, as we can see, the process starts with the input of data, which can come from different sources uh, as to our dimensional images, multispectral images, seismic signals, encephalographic signals, surveys, tweets, Facebook messages, traditional databases, and other data sources that is of um, or interested of study. Once the, once the uh, data is set, the process starts with the first stage called preprocessing from which a data set is obtained ready to train the machine learning model. The, the model uh, training stage, this one, is the core of the whole machine learning process since the candidate model is derived from it. If this candidate model passes a given acceptance criteria, then it's ready to be used in real life. Acceptance criteria are usually determined by a function to be minimized or maximized. Example of this are the mean square error, number of iteration, minimum expected error, overall accuracy, among others. 
To give more clarity to the entry process, I'm going to exemplify it with the data collected by governments in relation to the COVID-19 in this pandemic. In the first step, the patient record will be taken as input, for which these characteristics will be obtained, age, sex, comorbidities, result of the laboratory, if the person was hospitalized, if was intubated, and if they overcome the disease or not. Next, the preprocessing stage uh, starts, and in this one, all those problems inherent to the input data are resolved. The first step uh, is data cleaning, uh, where are eliminated noise, outliers, atypical data, handling missing values, among other problems. And in the data integration step of all the available characteristic best that represent the problem, according to the nature of the problem, sometimes it's necessary to enrich the, the data with the intention of basing the model. In balance class, uh, and I will example for this. Imagine a number of healthy and sick patients. Fortunately, there are more healthy people than sick people, but this situation affects the performance of the machine learning algorithms since they then tend to ignore the less represented class. Some strategy is class weighting. That's if our data is divided in categories such as healthy and sick, we may be more interested in recognizing some of them or helping the model not ignoring someone. In our example of COVID-19, it's much more important to recognize sick people so that they do not spread the virus. Uh, now, in, in many occasions, it's essential to make a transformation of the data so as to machine learning can process it. Discretization, normalization, or categorization of data are a few examples. And finally, finally, we have the data reduction task. And it can happen in two ways, reducing the size of the data or reducing the dimensionality of the characteristic vectors. This reduction seeks to eliminate redundant instance or characteristics that don't provide useful information about the assessment study. For example, cases uh, the patient who don't have comorbidities, their rapid test was negative, or patient who received the treatment at home. After the four Four, four uh, steps uh, occur is necessary a data validation, a data validation, and in this uh, we apply some error probability estimation method or some quality metric to ensure that the data is set ready to train the model. If the result of the validation is not satisfactory, you may have to reduce some of the previous steps, the cleaning data data integration, data transformation, or data reduction, and then revalidate the data set. Now, in the learning stage, in which the machine learning is, is trained, and when this stage is finished, the candidate model to be used is obtained, to carry out this learning, the most popular strategies are shown on, on this slide, and is supervised learning, unsupervised learning, and reinforcement learning, and recently, deep learning. The main difference between each of these learning approaches lies in whether the input data is separated into, in, into classes or not. That is, if, if the data set, the classes in which the data can be distributed are distinguished, healthy and sick would be an example in, the, in, in this case, the COVID-19. And in particular, uh, about the deep learning models, they consider hybrid learning in which the model is capable to identify data distribution without necessarily starting from labeled data. This is an aspect that makes them so useful in different areas of application. And in the following slides, I explain each, uh, each approach briefly. Um, do you remember this movie? Exactly, it's a Star Wars movie. And this is in, we can see Yoda and look. Remember what Yoda did? He tried Luke and tell him that he needed to, to know. And when Luke missed up, Yoda corrected him. This could only happen if Yoda knew what a mistake or success means in Luke's performance. Well, something similar 
happens with supervised learning. There is a prior information on that the machine learning model is expected to learn, and there is full knowledge when the model has made a mistake. For this reason, the model is iterative shown all the data that we want wanted uh, to learn until a minimum error is reached. Um, as happened with teacher and students, in the classroom, the teacher transmits all the all his knowledge on a subject, uh, and to ensure the student's knowledge, the teacher applies an exam. This is the same. This approach is the one used for prediction tasks, and among the most popular algorithms, we can find the artificial neural networks decision tree, neighborhood-based mod models, such as nearest neighbor rule, support vector machine, Bayesian algorithm, uh, among others. Now, in opposite way, uh, remember the scene for this movie and who is what nice chubby guy that appears in this image and what's doing? Well, it's from the Wally movie and that chubby guy is the captain who is standing about the planet Earth. Earth and remember, well, uh, a situation important here is the, cap the captain was alone and he started asking questions to the artificial intelligence of the ship. One question led to another and so on, until he learned enough to make a decision returning to Earth. Well, this is exactly the same thing that is preserved with unsupervised learning. There is no teacher or pure knowledge, so the model must infer and discover the knowledge contained in the data. This approach is the most used in data mining and as well in data description tasks. In their operation, in supervised learning algorithms use similarity metrics, frequency, and the most popular algorithms of this approach are clustering algorithms and associative models. The last one. In the last one, classical approach is the reinforcement learning. If any of you have a dog or a cat, you'll quickly understand the logic that runs this approach. Just remember what you have to do to prevent the puppy from being in every corner of the house or teaching the cat how to use the little bots. Well, just as it, to train a dog, which is given a reward when it does a good job, so is reinforcement learning. If the model asserts the input in e reinforcement, if not, is penalized. The process is iterative and conclude until the algorithm reach the global minimum error or until a certain number of iteration is fulfilled. Now, let's talk about deep learning. To, to explain this model, I have used a well-known image on the web in, in my slide. On the one hand, we have at the top, uh, the general process that traditional machine learning would follow when using one of the other three learning approaches explaining above. While in the lower part here, uh, the deep learning process is, uh, is, is shown. As we can see, in both cases, we have the same input, the data of car, and the aim of the model is to recognize an object and indicating if it's a car, or not. In the traditional machine learning, we have the two steps, pre-processing data and training, training model. But in deep learning, deep learning, the pre-processing stage is not required since this task is performed internally by the model here. Uh, on, until today, this approach is mainly carried out with artificial neural networks and are, are, are too popular for resolve several problems in, in the in the researches around the world. Mm, well, now, uh, what is that makes machine learning so popular? Some aspects are, they can be applied to large volumes of data, which is one of the main challenge with the escalation of the information today. And secondly, it's the high capacity of processing millions of data efficiently with current technological advances in terms of computing capacity. In, in fact, this is where machine learning strain relies on by optimizing process by reducing computational requirements compared to traditional methods. And finally, and the most important today, 
most of the code is open, which facilities its use and adap adaptation to, to needs of the researchers around the world in several areas. Okay, well, uh, you can see. Uh, now, what benefits or topics can be addressed with machine learning in chemistry problems? For this, I, I dive in the web to see some open lines in chemistry that can be addressed with machine learning strategies. I found some, some quite interesting proposal that I'll comment on. I apologize if advanced because, as you know, I'm from the computing area and I'm definitely not an expert in your area, but I try to present some topics that I currently address in machine learning algorithms and could be you for your interest. The first one. The first one is the prediction of properties of chemical compounds such as new drugs. When a new drug is found, it's a prior difficult to determine whether that substance will be easy or difficult to synthesize, where it's not is soluble in water or if the if it can produce adverse effects and its degree of toxicity. The prediction of these properties is control uh, in control scenarios is essential, especially in if these tests are simple or cheap. Regarding this, regarding this, machine learning has been used to predict properties such as geological activity or activity drugs toxicity or solubility. The next one. It's about designing new materials for a specific application of interest. Uh, as you may know, the number of possible combination of atoms to form uh, valid molecules is estimated to be of the order of 1,000 compounds. And definitely among this combination, there are some that are, uh, are ideal for the case in study. However, this is prohibited when it's done empirically, which implies high cost and time. Machine learning algorithms propose a solution to this problem. For example, with strategy aim to accelerate the simulation calculations and proposing structures within the databases that may be more interesting to consider or predicting the most promising molecules that when taking account the original data set. Uh, okay, I have only a few minutes. Uh, another open line is the prediction of the chemical reaction, uh, the reaction which is an uh, option for retrosynthetic analysis and drug synthesis and dry design. It's intended that the algorithms could be capable of emulate human intervention. In, order, in other words, the algorithm could be capable of learning the grammar of chemical reaction in order to adhere something similar to one in you know, chemical. Well, uh, uh, I have another option, but okay. I'm going to the main part for me, okay, uh, the question, when we review all of this, the question here obligatory is, okay, I'm a chemist. Uh, yes, the use of the machine learning will be very pertinent, but that I'm not a statistician or programmer. How do I it? Uh, the, the good news here is that, uh, as I mentioned before, most algorithms are free and available to any anyone who needs them. In this regard, um, there are several frameworks available and open access. In this slide, we can see the most robust and current in machine learning and big data in the computational area, Keras, Pandas, Spark, Google Collab, TensorFlow, between others. The problem here is that this frame, framework is that to get most of, um, of them, it's necessary to have computer knowledge which, which makes the use limited by researchers from the other areas. But the good news is that in the scientific community for experimental developments, in addition to the last frameworks, there are also the most classical, Weka and Kill. In fact, the workshop is scheduled today and morning and tomorrow is same as using them from the most basic and as long as time alone. So I would suggest that you don't, don't miss. Okay, this is one. And this, this reflection. Finally, remember an important aspect in, in all of this. The no free launch theorem makes us emphasize that there is not a universal solution. And the result and performance of the algorithms is strongly related to the data and configuration of the models used. So it's essential to keep this in mind and consider that the results obtained 
at a given moment depend either on the data user or the free parameters will train in the model. That's all for me. I leave my contacts here. And for any question that may there, so thank you very much. Yes, okay. Sí. Te escucho, te escucho, Erika. Ok, tú me haces la pregunta y, y ya yo la respondo para ti. is that the coding the the languages and the um, script that do make in the weka or kill you can download and adapt adapt it to the um, the situation of the or the problem and the communication with another software is natural because all of them for example Example, Kera, Panda, Panda Spark, or another, uh, are, are free too. And the, the codification of the obtained in Weka or Kill can run on Spark or, or TensorFlow, but the problem here is that the this framework that you get the, um, is necessary to have a computer knowledge which makes the use in the for example the Spark or Panda or Keras or this one this one easier because there are them select the only run run the framework you need to to okay okay thank you
I turn off my camera. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Okay. Uh, uh, the 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 most uh, easier frameworks is Weka and Kill. If you build a, a solution in this framework, you can download the the system and you can run the the system now in another framework such as Spark or TensorFlow. The pro 